Okay, folks, how's it going? And welcome to our run shoe review with Kefi Athletic. And today, helping us out with the review, we have on my left is Rebecca the Bullet Cochran, uh, has won up the Creek Track and on several times, 55 mile winner, Ennis 10k winner, the list just goes on and on, savage age group runner. And on my right, we have multiple Ironman John Cal, fantastic age group runner, also West Fair Try, runs with uh, St. John's and has three out of his last four marathons at sub three and i'm not going to tell you how old he is you will be seriously impressed um i'm actually taking credit for getting him down with the training so to kick it off we're just trying to keep it short and snappy and there's also a promo code going in at the end for uh, central sports store um, you will get a discount on any running gear if you use that promo code. I'd also like to say we're not selling anything here, we're not selling anything or promoting anything from anyone. What we're doing is we're giving an honest review on shoes that we have worn over the last number of years, over thousands of kilometers, what we think of them, how they performed for us, what was good about them, what was bad about them, and we hope that it helps you uh, to make a decision if you're a, a, a runner on uh, the shoe for you. But we're not trying to convince you to buy any particular type of shoe, so I just want to make that clear. So we might kick off with Rebecca, uh, who is a lover of New Balance, and uh, she might tell us a little bit about a couple of pairs of New Balance that she likes to wear. Okay, well I love the New Balance propel, the ones that are stuffed with newspaper. You can see they're well worn and stuffed with paper. They're all wet from this morning, but um, they are great for shorter stuff, speed work, they're springy, there's a lovely little bounce of the heel, and they're light, they're super light, there's a nice thick toe, uh, tongue there, laces are grand, white toe box like, so yeah, I would. they're a lovely shoe for short stuff, I wouldn't really wear them for anything over 8 miles, say. for the longer stuff I wouldn't, just because there's no, there's not really much support there in the sole like, so. Okay, so you're saying that for a long kind of slow run you wouldn't be bothered with them, really no, they're kind I, of for I, a short for style me tempo. me anyway, like, yeah, yeah I need yeah. a bit more padding in the like sole of the shoe yeah. for for that like but and just just to be clear there for a second Rebecca, you're a neutral runner or do yeah you, yeah okay yeah, yeah, yeah. so really for the neutral runner over a short tempo kind of distance you're saying and comfortable the stitching and yeah is, no, yeah I was, it's fine yeah really comfy shoe no problems with that like just but i have worn it longer and i felt kind of just muscle tiredness and aches okay you know and true to size yeah, the, well, now when you go on to New Balance, so I'm a 4.5, so then you put in your size and it, it's, it, I think it comes up as 37, so just follow the guidelines on the New Balance okay. website to what you are like. So, yeah. But yeah, they would be. No and what kind of distance would you get out of them, do you think? Um, um, well, I have these a year now, and I'd say I guess. That's a world probably, record. I, yeah, I had, yeah but no, I got them last summer actually, yeah. so it's a year in the summer, so I'd probably. I'll, I'll be keeping an eye out now and sit the sales and I might okay. I'll just I'll and, buy another pair of them like. And just for value for money, uh, Rebecca, how would you These say they are? about 100 quid, so. Okay, yeah, yeah she can't really go wrong with that really for, for 100 pounds, yeah. Like, yeah. And um, <clears throat> would you wear them sockless, with a sock, without a sock? Oh God, no, I'd never go sockless. Okay. No way. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I used to get suffer off the blood blister. Uh, that's great. Um, okay, so let's well just call the name of them shoes again for me. The uh, New Balance uh, Rebel Propel. Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, so there you have Rebecca's uh, input on the New Balance Propel. Um, John is going to look at. He's a big fan of the uh, Adidas, as as uh, I am myself, and truly he's gone through all the Boston series, all the way up from five up to nine. So he might just give us a little rundown on. And uh, what he thinks it does. Yeah, this is their latest everyday runner, the Boston 9. And I think they've really come up trumps this time. The problem with the Bastons was um, they always seem to have a narrow toe box. With these, this, they've really come up good with them. The nice wide toe box, nice drop, there's a 10 mil from heel to toe. It kind of brings you, the good thing about the Bastons, they bring, it brings you up on your, your forefoot. So you're not really. I'm kind of a heel striker, so it kind of lift, lifts me, lifts me that little bit up, you know. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but um, all along, like the, the Boston Six, Boston Five, the start to next to be Boston Five. But the only thing I find with them, they change them too often. The, sometimes the twice a year that that they bring out. Yeah, I, I actually the found that Boston. you get really comfortable in the Boston yeah. Six, and all of a sudden the Boston Seven's available, and you're going, oh, did they change it? Did they change it? Why did they change it? And then it's the Boston Eight. Yeah, but they pretty much stay true to. They're, they're more or less, yeah. more or less. But what they did was as well, they brought out, the, this is the Boston 8, 
completely different. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. is the bastonade. Now what they did was, this is a bastonade actually that I want here as well. Now they, they changed it, they added this light strike. It's a little, um, they normally have this, this boost, this is pellets. Yeah, yeah. No, what they did was they put a light strike above it. Yeah. So it gives you that little bit of a yeah. spring. Do you know, but um, they've really come up close with this one now. This one you could use it for 5k, 10k. They say the Bastons, they don't recommend them for marathon on them, but I've. I've done, yeah, I've done marathons, don't you know? Yeah, I've done two in the Bastons yeah. and uh, I, can't, I couldn't That's follow them really. This is the That's latest the nine, one, yeah. the Baston 9 now, yeah. But just, just a little tip there, uh, I think this is an 8 I had from uh, a couple of years ago. And like John, I have a small foot but I'm wide kind of from here to here. And I found the same thing after, when you get deep into kind of mileage country and your foot gets sore, it's very, very kind of uncomfortable. But what I did was, if you can see that there, I used to bother lacing uh, the bottom hole at all, maybe even take out the bottom two. And I found them uh, way better. I actually found them completely different. Yeah, it just gave my foot that little bit of uh, breathing room and you can see I come down quite hard on the toe there, so it, it really kind of helped me out. Yeah. But I'd be like you, I love the Boston Seattle, they're a fantastic shoe. Yeah, but this, as I say, you don't have to do with this one because it's wide enough. Yeah. You know, and like, you know, as you run, the further you get on, your feet start to swell up. Yeah. Whereas with the sevens and even the, the eights, yeah. still that little bit tight. Okay. But this one is definitely... My go to and it's a real it. kind of an all round shoe, oh, isn't it? Is. You know, the Five, soft, the, the, yeah. the upper mesh is kind of soft. There's a bit of movement in it, but uh, it's generally a really good all round shoe. If you're a neutral runner, you yeah. walk around. Well, actually, with they're, they're flat, they're a racing flat. Yeah. But you can actually use them for 5k, 10k, half marathon, yeah. and marathon. So. Do you use them for training? Use them for training every day. Every day. Yeah, I swap them between the 8s, uh, well, like the 7s, 8s, and 9s. Mm -hmm. So, so Colin, John, anything you don't like about the shoe? No, actually, do you know what? I think uh, you can actually run sockless with it as well, so which is great for triathlon. Okay. All you need to do is just stick in a bit of a uh, pair of elastic laces, and you can run barefoot, which is great. Du for durability. How long would you get out of the shoe? You get twelve months, but as I say, but I'd I'd swap between yeah, seven yeah, eights yeah. and the yeah. nine. So between them all, yeah. you know, I, I, I'd normally get around four or five months out of Boston, but again, yeah. like John, I'd be alternating between two or three pairs at the same time. Yeah. Um, value for money, John? Well, they actually have sales on every so often. But if you ever see them on sale, just pick them up. They're about 100 euros. Yeah, you can't go wrong for that. Yeah, you can go wrong so you can't really go too yeah. far on them. Okay, next one uh, I'm going to talk about is the Sacconi Endorphin Pro. Now, don't mix this up with the Sacconi Endorphin Speed. They look very, very similar, but they're not the same shoe. And this is kind of Sacconi's offering to the carbon uh, world. Uh, you can see you can you can hardly bend that. Uh, there's a carbon plate, and it's a shoe that I love now. It really suits me because there's a drop mate here that keeps you propelled forward. So if you're kind of a forward runner, um, this really keeps you up in your toe and is really suitable for like a mid to four foot strike. Um, I absolutely love it. It's light. It performs really well, especially when it's when you get going when you're about a mile down the road and they warm up. They're absolutely lovely. Uh, again, I have worn it sockless, like John there. I'm not too bothered with the socks over anything up to 10 miles. I'm not too concerned about it. It's a really soft, comfortable upper, and it's got a really nice tongue. It, uh, it's, it's sewed in here. Sometimes when the tongues are sewed into the shoe, that they can become really, they can kind of catch you, but this one doesn't. I really find it kind of nice and comfortable. It comes in at around 200 euros. I think I got it for around 190. In terms of value for money, it's fantastic at that. When you're dealing with the carbon stuff like that's out there for 300 euros and 285 euros, it's absolutely brilliant. And the only thing is that they are, they are difficult to get. But again, a shoe anyone can wear, it can go across any of the distances, 5K right up to marathon, I wouldn't have an issue wearing it. Performs well, it's comfortable. Um, anything I don't like about it, not really. I wear it on tempo runs. I don't really wear it on the easy miles. I don't find it you know, beneficial on the easy miles. But it's really lovely when you get going. Um, so I'm going to swing it back to Rebecca, and she's going to give us a little something on the next. Which one? Fuel cell? Whichever you like. The fuel cell TC, maybe, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll do the two of them. Because yeah, do the two, yeah. Okay, cool. These are both carbon shoes. But, so these are the ba Nike Vaporflies, and these are the New Balance Fuel Cell TC. TC yeah. So they're both carbon. These are 280, these are 200. They're both carbon. Um, I have these a year and I have these since Christmas and they actually look 
boat wrecked as much, but um, they, my favourite would have to be the vapour flies because they just feel lighter. They, um, I, I just, I just prefer them. Um, these kind of feel a bit clumpy, if you get me. Yeah, when you're kind yeah. Of, when yeah. you're kind of running like, and the the tongue is very narrow, so okay. I, I find I can get a bit sore. I have to watch how I tie the laces and on the top because it can get sore, or, you know, or I have to loosen them up or whatever. Yeah. But other than that, they are comfy, like they have a nice wide toe box. These are slightly narrower, Yeah. but just to open, widen the laces like that. Um, now the next ones they brought out are wider, Yeah. so you know, they're fine. Like, But now I just use these for training. And, yeah, sure. That's all we're doing now with training, so yeah. we're both being used for training. So. Just a, a, an interesting little tip there. I picked up one time when Rebecca was saying about her laces were a little bit tight. When you buy new shoes and they come laced up, take the laces off, put your foot into the shoe with the sock that you like to run in, and then lace them up while your foot is in the shoe. Mm -hmm. And I find that that's the best way to find a little bit of comfort in the actual shoe. But, yeah, like Rebecca there, I have the vapor flies also. And there was an awful lot of hole of blue when they came out first. Are they really what they say they are? Are they this or they that? And they are! They are what they say they are! <laughs> I'll tell you the difference in the vapor flies is that if you're an on the minute runner, if you're an 18 minute 5 care, or if you're a 19 minute 5 care, or if you're, let's say you're a 20 minute or a 2005 or a 2010, these get you an 1830. Or if you're an 1810 runner, these will get you a 1745. So if you want to be, and, and to runners, that's massive. So that's the difference between that. If you go to any race, Everyone at the front. Everyone's wearing them. Everyone's wearing them. Yeah. You know. Yeah, they do. They actually do what they say on the tin. Yeah. And they're, the only thing is, there's not a lot of durability in them. No, I wouldn't. No. Like, my soles are okay, to be honest. I haven't raced in them for, because, you know, whatever yeah. you've got on, like, so. But um, I see I am starting to wear Go through, at yeah. the top my like, foot. Yeah. Look, you know. You can always wear them for step aerobics. Yeah, just just see how you're doing the shopping. You play yeah. around like I'm actually the same there. I'm the same as Rebecca. I find them kind of narrow here, but like they say they're good for around 300k, 350k. Um, I probably have that going in them. I'm still knocking the odd tempo run out of them. But uh, no, I tell you what I do find actually is with the shoes with the higher heel drop, I find that the performance shoe, this also has carbon. It's literally impossible to bend is that the pad of my big toe sometimes can get very, very hot no, when I'm down the road. Not. Maybe it's the way yeah. that I'm a kind of a forward leaner, I'm a midfoot runner. But I even found today, we did a marathon recently and I'm 34, 35, yeah, to t stop and take off my sock. That base of my foot was just absolutely on the fire. Pressure, like. And the pressure from hitting the road. And I think it's because you're in that performance position to kind of Does push your calves ever get sore now? I find my calves can get tight now a bit with those. <clears throat> I actually, I'm least sore after these. Yeah. yeah. I find that I could run again the next day, or even after a real hard yeah, kind of yeah. a session, I could run again. No, not in bits or anything, but it's just, it's, yeah. it's, you know, they're tight. Like. Um, John, tell us a little bit about Adios's or uh, Adidas's answer to the car. Here we go. This yeah. is them. And I'll tell you, they've come up. Apart from looking like ginger spice. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is <laughs> there's a 40 mil stack here it's just under 40 i think 40 is the is the max like so it's something like is it 38 39 mil of a stack here that's right yeah. no you still have the the same drop it's it's around eight and a half mil from from uh heel to toe they're the way about eight ounces which is the same way the vapor flies actually are a bit lighter Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. These are eight ounces. No, the thing is, what they have, they have done compared to the Vapor Flies and the Nike Alpha Flies, it's not a carbon plate, it's actually rods. And the rods actually sit under your metatarsal. Okay. Right, so when it, there's no real rocking effect. Do you know what's. Yeah. That is, like, with, I find with the Vapor Flies and the Alpha Flies, the shoe kind of takes over. Mm. Do you know? Whereas this one, it's more. Yeah, more natural, but it does propel you forward. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they have a, a carbon plate at, at, at the heel of it. So between the carbon plate at the heel and the rods at the front, yeah, you get fair propulsion off it. Like, no, I got these actually the day before we did the loop head marathon. And one thing they always say is never try anything new on race day. No, it wasn't an official race, like yeah. even though Kevin came in ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> But, Say that again. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but I did wear them because I said, she said, we well, have to get these. Like, and I'm running the marathon, I'm going to try them out. 
And I was told, you're mad, you're mad, you're going to end up with blisters, you're going to end, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. Did a full marathon, did 306 now, we didn't do a hell of a lot of training. And the following, yourself, the following day, my legs were perfect. Now they do say that is that uh, recovery, Yeah, recovery is great. No, I don't know, like the, compared to the, sorry, no. compared to the, um, the Bostons, you have, there's no real, the real grip there. No. George, the yeah. no, they're not bad in weight, but as for these, they stick to the ground. Yeah. Do you know, on the weight. I, I found these quite slippy actually. I yeah. remember one day a torrential rain. There's nothing. And uh, yeah. I thought once or twice I, 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 I did get a little bit of a jolt. Yeah. But um, they're fantastic. They're unbelievable. And value for money, John. Value for money, they're uh, 196 euros. Yeah, it's, yeah. Do you know, against, against nearly against, 300. Against 300, no. These are something else, but we'll talk about those in a minute. Um, <laughs> I, I, I wore these uh, on a 10 mile tempo, and a week later, I wore these on exactly the same tempo on the same course in very similar conditions. And uh, these outperformed these, no, not by much, but maybe four or five seconds a kilometer. Um, but both equally good, but great value for money as well. And uh, there's not much like to not enjoy about them. Again, the stitching in here is. It's fairly good. It it's is, almost yeah. sockless, isn't it? Oh, you could go sockless with it. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you're a neutral or a, or a, a midfoot striker, these are, these are tailor made for you. Like, these are going to just, they do what they say on the tin, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now, the only thing is they're very hard to get. They released them again yeah. there yeah. in yeah. September and they were gone in 15 minutes. Yeah. No do you know, so I was just I'm lucky to get those as well. My daughter got it yeah. so. Okay, just to break it up, we had a couple of questions that came in onto the Instagram page. Uh, one was, um, how often should I change my shoes? And the answer is really, you, there's actually an app where and Garmin will tell you how many miles that you can get out of a particular shoe as far as I know. But I just run them until, uh, they'll feel like a soft tire on a bike, you know, and a telltale sign is kind of around the neck here. Around the neck of the shoe will start to get very kind of bent out of shape. That's a real telltale sign. And, and you'll know. And if you're training with people and they're starting to beat you, buy new shoes straight away. <laughs> That's the first thing. The second, quite, there was a question on, somebody asked about shin splints. Um, look at consult your physio. Um, it could be overuse. January is a time of year when everybody is trying to do more than they probably should be. It's generally an overuse injury. It could be your biomechanics. It could be the shoes that you're wearing. It could be anything. It's a bit broad. But don't train on them. Don't walk, don't walk or run on them. I would definitely go and uh, see somebody about them and get some uh, professional advice. Uh, question for John Cagg, come in there. What type of shoes he likes just for walking, for casual stuff, for somebody starting out? Oh, it depends, but it depends on what you're comfortable with. If someone's starting off running, like, there's no point me saying, oh, definitely get a pair of Bastons, because the Bastons suit me. Just try them on, go to your local shoe shop and um, get them to have a look at your gait, see, try on a few pairs, see what you're comfortable with. I tried a few earlier on and just, I'm just so, so comfortable with the Bastons, I just keep getting them. Yeah. It's, it's whatever you're comfortable with. You know, Good advice, with. yeah. Uh, just a little shoe there that I almost ran over. Um, it's called uh, an Asics Meta Racer, and they've kind of made a quiet entry to the market. Uh, just a little shoe that um, I almost brushed over there. Um, it's Asics uh, offering to the carbon market, and it's a real replica of the old racing flat kind of the DS Racer. Um, it's lovely. 5k right up to I, I wouldn't go beyond maybe 10 or 12 miles maybe half marathon i ran a few long uh, runs in these and i actually found that because it's very narrow fitting that uh my feet got a little uncomfortable after 10 to 12 miles but anything up to that they're they're really light i think they're in around six and a half ounces um, they've got the carbon, they propel you forward, really nice mesh upper, really nice tongue in them and they're true to size, they're just a little bit narrow so if you've got a wide foot um, I would just uh, be careful but a, a really 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 good shoe and at 180 euros again with carbon you walk around. Um, that leaves us with the Alpha Fly John I think. Yeah this is Nike's offering. This is the one that uh, Kip Troy gave it, brought the to our to our as a prototype. No, I haven't a hell of a lot done in it. I did 10 miles in it. They take a bit of getting used to. Now, the thing about it is, they have pods here at the front. They'd be suitable now for someone, say, which that lands heavy. Yeah. You know, they actually do, they do propel you forward. Again, they're the same weight as the Adios, they're eight ounces. There's a four mil drop from heel to toe. 
they're, they're comfortable. No, the, the only thing I found with the vapor flies is that my, my ankle was, wasn't as stable as with these. So these, like, you can actually really lace them up and, and they're nice and they're, they're, they're nice and comfortable. You, you could wear them for 5k, 10k, half, full. Yeah. John, John pronates a little bit. He comes in a little bit. So sometimes if you're a pronator, you really got to watch the stack height of the shoe. You don't want to be way up in the air and collapsing in. I, you know, it's really, you have to be careful with that. Yeah. But, but, but I actually wore them the other night there, though. We went for, uh, we did a session. We did three, four by three K reps and uh, off three minutes recovery and we were giving it a fair old rattle and I really, really liked them. They're really driving forward, but they're very loud. You can oh, hear yeah. them actually yeah. tum, tum, tum. It sounds like someone has boxes yeah. on their feet when they're coming. And they're so, they're so, they don't look slick or they don't yeah. look, but they're actually they look, very, very quick shoes. They yeah. look chunky, yeah. but they're, they're actually, the good thing about them as well, they're very stable mm. as opposed to, sorry now, vapor flies. If you look at them there, you know, they're, they're, they're nice and wide. Yeah. Say for going around corners and that. No, I yeah. found with these now actually my ankle would roll. Yeah. Whereas these they're a lot, they're, they're, they're a lot more steady. But at 300 euros. So you want to be winning, winning races. Yeah, you want to be winning, winning some races. Yeah. So Rebecca, um, just closing up. I'm just a little conscious of the time. Um, uh, so favorite shoe mm, for racing the vapor flies and for everyday training the New Balance Propel Rebel. Like for someone starting off, I would go for those. Okay, brilliant. John, you're sorry? Gonna, sorry, you're not going to start off doing like huge mileage anyway. Yeah. So it's a good beginner shoe, I think. Brilliant, yeah. John, favourite shoe? Favourite shoe was Boston's uh, all day. Yeah. And especially with the Boston nine notes, nice and wide in the front. and. Okay. And for racing, definitely, so far any of these, but I haven't really given the Alpha Flies a good pack yet. But uh, for racing, yeah, definitely. Okay, and I gotta say that uh, my favourite would be I'm a huge Boston fan um, of the Adidas family, but I love these. I love the Sicconi and Dorfman Pro. They'll do everything for you. You can train, you can race, you can do anything. But if I was to go again with a racing shoe, I think I'd be going towards the Adios Pro for value for money. I can keep 85 euros in my pocket and can still do the same damage with these. So I think that, yeah, all in all. That's the same. It's a winner, huh? Yeah. So again, thanks for John for coming in, giving us a handout today. Um, and a big thanks to Rebecca for coming in, giving us her expert opinion as well today. And the Central Sports discount is KFIT Shoe Review 10%. It's a discount code. You get 10% of anything to do with uh, running gear, uh, shorts, singlets, runners, everything. And uh, thanks, I hope it made sense.